So that's what you get when the suction cup holding the GoPro on the bonnet of your car fails at just under 30 mile an hour. Now at the time I was out taking some extra b-roll footage for a photo shoot down at a great place called Brent Tor. And as it happens I did manage to get the photo shoot done and I did manage to get some behind the scenes footage but using other kit like the DJI Pocket 2 and the DJI uh, Mavic Air 2. Just fabulous bits of kit that do exactly what they're supposed to do. However, after picking a fight with the tarmac, you can see here that the GoPro, the touchscreen there on the back, is completely wrecked, along with the ND filter as well. So this is no more, no use, despite only having had it for about two weeks. But I've got to be perfectly honest that in that two weeks, I'd already started to feel that the, the GoPro just wasn't living up to all the hype that's been around the internet. Now there has been so much hype about this new GoPro Hero 10 that I expected so much more from it. Not unreasonable hopes and expectations, but I just wanted. In fact, no, I expected way better video quality. Now the last GoPro I had was going back years, I don't know, maybe version 4 or maybe even version 5, but having used it just a couple of times, I was so unimpressed by the quality of the video that it just went back into its box in a cupboard and it's been gathering dust ever since. But at the time now when I've been looking to make my on location filming kit so much smaller, much more convenient, this just seemed to have come at the right time. The GoPro Hero 10, looking at all the footage that's being posted online, looked to be the answer, a great addition to my uh, portable kit. Now I'd seen videos by Peter McKinnon along with the official videos from GoPro and yeah, it looked really impressive. 4K at 120 frames per second, 2.7K at 240 frames per second, and even been able to film at something like 5 something K as well. And the stabilization and the horizon leveling looked insane. So I got it, along with some other bits and pieces. And yes, the stabilization, the horizon leveling worked fantastic. But going into 4K or maybe even the 5 something K when I would be filming it, then looking on the computer, it was like, how could that possibly be 4K or 5 something K? The quality was just not there. It's grainy. It, it, it just wasn't good. It was like going back a few years with previous gadgets I'd, I'd have used for doing some filming with. Now, if you go online, there are countless videos and websites with supposed optimum settings for the GoPro to get the very best results and I've watched quite a few and I've tried loads of different tweaks but it's still not good especially for a camera in 2021 and let's face it apart from maybe changing to a, a flat color profile and a few other little tweaks does the pro user really need to do more to get half decent footage let alone just the average consumer should be able to just pull it out of the box turn it on maybe put it into 4k and still get decent footage but no, not at all, nowhere near it. Now in Peter McKinnon's video, he even refers to a credit card sized piece of card in the packaging that gave them optimum settings from GoPro. But why should we even need it to get even half decent footage? So yes, after just two weeks, my brand new GoPro Hero 10 is officially broken. And I'll take the blame for that 100%. This was down to a failed suction cup. So if you know of anywhere in the UK that is an official GoPro repairer, I, I will get this screen done. You know, rather than it just being put in a drawer now and gathering dust like some other kit, it would be nice to get it fixed because I would like to use it for some bonnet footage. That doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. Some footage from the car would be nice with that. But this isn't a video about a failed suction cup. This is a bit video about the quality of that GoPro Hero 10. All the hype, all the little tweaks apparently you can do, the secret source to try to get some half-decent footage, and it just wasn't there. It just seems to me that all the hype really 
is about the stabilization and the horizon leveling, which absolutely 100% works and works really, really well. But what is the use of that when the footage isn't up to it anyway? You know, we should there shouldn't be any kind of secret source to make this give us half decent footage. You should be able to just pull it out of the box, turn it on, put it into a high quality setting, and the average user should get decent footage. And like I said, the, the pro user should be able to dive in as you can to give it like a flat color profile that you can then tweak. But it's just not up to it. So yes, I did manage to get some B-roll footage from the photo shoot at Brent Tour. That'll be in the video next time. And you'll get to see all kinds of stuff, but that was done with the kit that I am going to be sticking with and that does live up to the hype and that I'm not sponsored by, the DJI stuff here. I absolutely love this bit of kit. And I'm sure at some point I'll do a video on this, but it does live up to the hype. And what I love about it is that I can just give it to anybody to use and it still will give good footage. They don't need to know much about using it other than just holding it and aiming it. Um, but that'll be on the video next time. So GoPro... I'm sure you're not going to lose any sleep about this, but you're not going to lose any profits either. The fact that I'm not going to be buying these anymore, but I'm kind of done with it. Unless you come out with something that does live up to the hype and I get to use it without buying it first, I won't be going down the GoPro route. So, um, yeah, I'll love you and leave you. That's all from me. Do the usual like, subscribe and all that kind of stuff, but check out next video over at Brent Tour with some behind-the-scenes footage with some stuff that does what it's supposed to do without the secret sauce.